By the way, the bandsaw in my book is the quickest chance to hurt yourself in a shop. I, I swear it could cut your arm off so quick you wouldn't even know it. Um, so I, I, have you been cautious of that or is there any protection against? I mean, like when you're swim, swinging that around, you got a, a foot of teeth coming at you. Yeah, the question was, how do you protect yourself while you're using that? I love your device. I'm going to build myself one because it's always a problem trying to get a circle right. And that's a slick way of doing it. But by the same token, I guess the question is, how do we maintain bandsaw safety? I worry more about bandsaw safety than I do table saw. And uh, they don't make any stop saws for bandsaws. Um. I'm not really sure what aspect of bandsaw safety you're, you're speaking about. Uh, in fact, uh, I had a discussion with John when he was here that I had uh, at one point taken the, uh, the blade guard off the, the, the upper guide uh, because it was just the way Grizzly manufactured it. It was binding and pushing the blade guard uh, back against the upper wheel. And so I took it off and uh, I was running, I was cutting probably about a, only about a four inch thick piece of wood. And I had leaned forward to get more directly over the cut. And fortunately, I also have a little uh, LED light, magnetic light up there. And my forehead hit the magnetic light. And I realized my forehead was only about an inch away from the blade. So I could have had a nasty gash on my, uh, my forehead had it not been for that light. So I, I, I modified the upper guard so it goes up and down smoothly. Uh, I've, I've only ever cut my hand once on a bandsaw and it wasn't terribly deep. Uh, that's not much of a, uh, an endorsement, I guess, but I guess I'm a bit more reckless around tools than most people. I do wear glasses, I wear hearing protection. Uh, and I more often get a small burn on my hand by reaching in behind to get scrap rather than across the teeth to uh, manipulate something. So, Sorry, I was I don't, gonna I don't ask. Know, uh, what, what kind of bandsaw safety you recommend, Jim? Well, does, does yours have a break on it? I have a rule that I will not reach anywhere into the table while the blade is going, whatever machine it is. And you reached into yours pretty quick. I couldn't tell on the video. So I assume you have a break that stops it almost immediately. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I get, again, I'm sorry. I, I can't tell precisely what you're saying. I'm sorry, is my audio not good? Uh, Barry's hearing isn't either. So I'll, let me take that. Um, I think there is a break on Barry's bandsaw. Um, and I think you're right, Jim, to let the bandsaw coast before you reach in there. I, too, have only had one bad injury in my woodworking 50, 60 years, and that is on the bandsaw. I saw it into the back of my hand uh, in 2014. Uh, and I remember in school I was taught that if you saw the tendons in your hand or chisel them, you were going to lose your hand. I mean, they're going to lose, they can't repair that. Well, that's not true anymore, fortunately. I was very lucky. A uh, local orthopedic guy sewed my tendons back together, and it uh, works as good as new. But uh, who, at the time, I didn't know that was going to happen. I was afraid I had actually permanently damaged my left hand by sawing it on the bandsaw. So I agree, the bandsaw is, it seems benign, but it's not. It can be very dangerous. I use, I use a push stick. I use a push stick all around the thing. In fact, it, my push stick is actually a turned push stick. It hangs in a holster next to there. You might show it to us one time. That's a good idea. Yeah. By, the, by the way, I, I, I a, bought me. that bandsaw. Uh, the other two I was considering did both have foot brakes. Uh, and I just assumed this one had a foot brake. And I was surprised when I received it that it didn't, but it was not, uh, it wasn't worth the effort of reboxing re it and sending it back. Uh, but I wish it did have a foot pedal brake. You wouldn't uh, add. You wouldn't consider making one and adding it. Yeah, yeah. 
I guess I could do it bare against the blade on the lower wheel. Yeah, um, on the rim of the wheel or something. It would be within your mechanical abilities. That's hey, no, um, like caliper but, type, I guess, could work. All right, I wasn't indicating you were doing it badly. I just, as you rounded the corners on that, I I thought, boy, it's that last when they cut through the last quarter inch that it slips and spins, and boy, that can when it can catch your fingers. That's all. Hi, I used to be a meat cutter uh, at Weiss Markets, and it's all about speed and cutting meat, and it it will take fingers off quickly. I didn't know of anybody have that happen, but general rule for me is don't use the bandsaw when you're tired. Or don't try to hurry. Just two things you absolutely cannot do. And never have your fingers in front of the blade as you're pushing it. That's the reflex you have to have, is your fingers are never in line with the blade, ever. And, uh, and, and Kenny's also absolutely right. When I sawed my hand, it was after dinner, and I had had at least one glass of wine, and it was stupid of me to be down in the shop. Well, that reminds me of a thought that I always, nearly always have when I go to the band saw is, yeah, right. They use these things to saw meat and bones, and uh, I don't think I want to get near that blade. And so I don't. Um, even you know, I mean, the moving blade is going to be dangerous, so just stay away from it. But the, the other thing with a bandsaw, when you push your piece in, it cuts. When you don't push, it doesn't cut. A table saw is going to throw a piece back at you much more quickly than a bandsaw will. Yes, that's also true. That's why I don't have one, among other reasons. Uh, I have a question if anybody had the experience now that we're on bandsaws with a blade, blade breaking on them. I always tell people in my shop, do not stand directly across from it unless you want your gut taken out by the blade if it breaks. Is that true? Has anybody experienced that? Well, I was going to say something on that. Yes, very much so. In fact, that's why you lower the guard to almost a minimal amount. So it's right down there. But the other thing, that blade can come right out of the machine. And I've seen that happen up at the college up here, that that blade can come right out. And usually as you're cutting, it'll start to thump. And when you hear that thump, just get back because it's going to come out of there. And usually we is used. And usually my wife's using it when it starts <laughs> thumping, so I have no problem with it. But anyway. <laughs> In, in uh, the, so she breaks your blend bandsaw blades, huh? That's right. Yeah, no, I, I think what people are saying here is something that we all sort of take for granted. But, you know, every single machine we use in the shop has a potential of ma major injury and safety first. You know, eyes on task, mind on task. Make sure you're 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 not putting your way in the you're out of the way of um, uh, out of um you know, uh, out of the way of pieces flying around, you know, so that whole safety is a matter of, as you said, John, of, uh, when you go into the shop or when you're doing something to go through that list in your mind to make sure, be it a bandsaw, lathe or table saw, chop saw, that you've yeah, got I, everything covered. I like a checklist approach of uh, sort of meticulously going, you know, from one, start with the machine, start with the uh, surroundings, go to the workpiece, go to me, but it, and where I've learned painfully to stop is at me. If I'm tired, if I've had a drink, if I, if it's after dinner, no machines, just don't. Yeah, you know uh, the thing that the most important thing here is something that'll help us as woodworkers. At least it did me. I'm a, a Lancaster County boy from up near the Berks County line, and I I knew how to shussel. You know what shussel is. And I shussled too much in the shop. So as I've gotten older, I learned to go slow. It cuts better while you're slow, whether it's the joiner, the table saw, or the bandsaw. Don't shussle your way through the cut. Just let it do its job. That's a good uh, course. Reflex for anybody. And of the other and I, thing is that, uh, for me, I think the two biggest uh, uh, causes of injury on any kind of power equipment is, first of all, repetition. If you're do, making 100 or something, you get very slack and get closer and closer to the blade or, or a brace of whatever you're using. And the other thing is distractions. Uh, if you're not by, if you're talking to somebody in the shop and carrying on a conversation, you can easily uh, 
uh, your muscle memory kind of goes off to the side and you wind up reaching across the blade or that, that's kind of been the cause of most of my hand injuries. And I've had Barry, many. Barry, I'm with you. The, the second rule I have around machines is do not look ahead to the fence. Keep your focus on the cutting edge. I know there's times you want to, but as soon as you lift up your eyes, you don't know where your fingers are. The oh, other God. part is the other part that people haven't said about bandsaw blade breaking is that new bandsaw blades, you always stand back to start, but they are generally pretty dull by the time they're going to get to the point of breaking. And it's always, you know, my grandfather always said that you rarely cut yourself on a sharp tool. It's always a dull tool because you you're pushing too hard, you're whatever. And uh, so if you find yourself putting too much push into a tool, then it means it's time to sharpen it <laughs> back well, off. The other thing that Barry and I experienced making the video is leaving the resaw blade on and then trying to cut a circle. The blade didn't absolutely came off the wheels uh, because you're putting a stress on it that it wasn't made, ever meant to carry. So that's the other thing is change the blade. And it absolutely. doesn't take very long with a little bit of practice. Also, the bandsaw is a very universal piece of equipment. You show a flat cut, that table could be done at an angle. You can do all kinds of things with a bandsaw. When you start getting into other situations, pay attention to where the blade's going in and coming out and everything else. It, it just The bandsaw will do all kinds of things. Jim, I wonder, I wonder if uh, taking that another step, use Barry's jig and tilt the table saw the table oh, 20 degrees or whatever. It'll take more of the bottom of that of that off. You won't need to use a chisel for it, huh? You can taper it at 45 if you want. Yes. I have done it. it. It works great. But well, that it also is deceiving is where the blade's going in and coming out sometimes. One further thing on the bandsaw thing is to I have students in my shop. I will never let anybody help me with a bandsaw cut. Never let anybody turn off or on the machine for you because they're all uh, plots for disaster. And if they're gonna be an off bearer, you have to teach them how to do that too. They can't not pull the piece. All they can do is support it. Wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>